Thank you for watching this presentation. I am Ralph Nickisher and will be presenting Juno Diaz. First, I will provide some background information on Diaz. I'll provide an analysis on the short story Drown, which was written by Diaz in 1996. I'll also compare his work to another author that we read this semester, who happened to also be an influence on Diaz. Juno Diaz was born in 1968. Until he was five, Diaz lived in Villa Wahana, a district of Santo Domingo in the Dominican Republic. Diaz's father lived and worked in the United States. When he was five, he joined his father and they lived in the London Terrace area of Parlin, New Jersey. Diaz attended Keene College and Rutgers University, where he majored in English. In 1995, he earned an MFA in creative writing from Cornell University. Two authors who were known to have influenced Diaz were Toni Morrison and Sandra Cesarios. Earlier in the semester, we read Recitatif by Toni Morrison. Juno Diaz is currently a fiction editor at Boston Review and teaches creative writing at the Massachusetts Institute of Technology. While still completing his master's degree, Diaz had numerous works published in the New Yorker and the Paris Review. These works were later captured and published into his first collection of short stories entitled Drown. In 2008, he won a Pulitzer Prize for fiction for his work, The Brief Wondrous Life of Oscar Wilde. In 2013, he released This Is How You Lose Her. Drown is a collection of short stories written by Juno Diaz. The short story explored in the class text is Drown, identically titled after the whole collection written by Diaz. The collection was published in 1996. Drown tells the story of a young man, Junior, and his best friend, Beto. The story is narrated by Junior, a young man living in New Jersey. Junior's mother tells her son that his former friend, Beto, is visiting while home from college. Over the course of the next few days, Junior navigates through his neighborhood, occasionally stopping to recall memories he shared with Beto. He recalls night swimming, shoplifting, and two sexual encounters shared between the two teenagers. One of the main themes explored in Drown is sexuality. Junior seems to be confused about his sexuality. He is adamant that he is not gay, but some actions would suggest otherwise. On page 1666, Junior says, quote, He's a pato now, but two years ago we were friends, and he would walk into the apartment without knocking, his heavy voice rousing my mother from the Spanish of her room, and drawing me up from the basement, a voice that crackled and made you think of uncles and grandfathers. End quote. Junior calls his former friend Beto a pato, which means gay person. I am left to interpret this quote to mean that he does not like the fact that Beto is gay. He essentially says, We were friends two years ago, but he's gay now which leads me to believe his sexual orientation has something to do with them not being friends anymore. Later in the story, on page 1671, Junior describes a night out with his friends. Quote, None of the chicas ever dance with us, but a glance or a touch can keep us talking shit for hours. End quote. Here Junior sets the scene where he and his friends are partying, trying to meet girls. When a girl so much as looks at them, it keeps them entertained for hours. Finally, Junior reveals his ex sexual experiences with his former friend, Beto, on page 1672, quote, twice, that's it, end quote. Here, Junior reluctantly admits that he and Beto had sexual encounters on two occasions. Junior may be gay, but does not want to face his sexuality. He and his current friends look for women at the bar but the fact he remains curious about his old friend Beto tells me that he has some unanswered questions regarding their past. 
The title of the short story is Drown, which is used as a symbol throughout the text. On page 1667, Beto holds Junior underwater. Quote, he was stronger than me and held me down until water flooded my nose and throat. End quote. This literal sense of drowning can also be viewed symbolically. Beto is moving on to college while Junior is trapped in their neighborhood. Junior is also being drowned by Beto in the sense that he is controlled by Beto and is easily convinced to participate in things like shoplifting. In addition to Beto, Junior's mother drowns him by making him take her to the mall on Saturday. Saturday is the most profitable day for Junior to sell weed to kids in the neighborhood, but he chooses to be held under financially to please his mother. I provided a quick background on the plot and also explored one of the themes and symbols. Here I will analyze a passage from the text which supports the previously described symbol and theme. The passage from page 1672 reads, quote, The next day he called, and when I heard his voice, I was cool, but I wouldn't go to the mall or anywhere else. My mother sensed that something was wrong and pestered me about it, but I told her to leave me the fuck alone, and my pops, who was home on a visit, stirred himself from the couch to slap me down. Mostly I stayed in the basement, terrified that I would end up abnormal. A fucking pato. But he was my best friend, and back then that mattered to me more than anything. This alone got me out of the apartment and over to the pool that night. He was already there, his body pale and flabby under the water. Hey, he said, I was beginning to worry about you. End quote. This passage continues to show the symbolism of drowning. Junior describes his father slapping him down or drowning him. Junior's father is rarely in the picture, but drowns his son when he is around. Also, Junior continues exploring his sexuality and refuses to accept homosexuality because his conditioning suggests that it is abnormal. He remained in the basement because he was terrified he would end up a pato, though the idea of losing Beto eventually dragged him out. Connections can be drawn between Juno Diaz's Drown and Toni Morrison's Recitative. Both authors write about people of color whose stories don't easily fit the narrative of social norms. Both texts are first-person narratives that explore the evolution of friendship with age. In both stories, the characters, once close friends, grow apart and explore different paths. In Recitative, Twyla and Roberta become friends when rooming together, but grow apart when they no longer live together. In Drown, Beto and Junior are best friends and their relationship is challenged after they have a few sexual encounters and Beto leaves for college. The authors both portray the fluidity of human relationships. The short answer question I ask is, analyze the imagery Juno Diaz uses to describe the New Jersey neighborhood in Drown and how it influences the characters in the story.